it's David and Brian from VM Blog, and we're here in San Diego. And we're covering the KubeCon uh, Cloud Native 2019 conference, and here's some of the highlights from the show. KubeCon 2019 in San Diego, and we're visiting with Morantis. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the company and what you're talking about here at KubeCon? Sure, sure. So Morantis has been in open cloud infrastructure since 2012, uh, first with OpenStack and now in the past five years with Kubernetes. Uh, today, we're showing Kubernetes as a service, our latest product offering, which we announced here at KubeCon recently. Great. And how do you fit into the uh, Kubernetes ecosystem? You know, what, what specific problems do you solve? Yeah, so Mirantis is a member of the CNCF, and we've been a member uh, for the past three years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the community grow quite extensively. We're contributors to a number of projects in the CNCF ecosystem, including Kubernetes. We've also initiated some of our own projects that are Kubernetes related as well. Uh, so we've seen KubeCon events uh, over the years as one of the best ways to con connect with the community and with the community of developers that are taking advantage of Kubernetes to accelerate their move to containerized and microservices architectures. And um, I understand you had some announcements around the show that maybe you can tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, so we uh, announced here at the show that we're now offering Mirantis Kubernetes as a service, or CAS, uh, and that is, as it, the name implies, Kubernetes as a service for a self-service developer experience that uh, enables developers to deploy Kubernetes clusters and manage them independently uh, you know, as a, a multi-cluster environment across cloud providers, whether they're public cloud, private cloud, uh, or bare metal even. And so we've had a lot of uh, interest in this product offering and uh, its ability to do lifecycle management in particular, which we feel is uh, a fairly unique capability that our solution is providing. And um, is it possible for us to maybe see the product or get a demo? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's head on over and I'll show you what it looks like. Great. So what are you going to show us? So today I'll show you the Mirantis Kubernetes as a service, the product that we announced here at KubeCon. And we'll give a, a short demonstration of how we can provide multi-cluster, multi-cloud management across cloud providers. Great. Okay, so what we're looking at here are namespaces which we can think of as tenants. And what I'll do is I'll drill into the KubeCon 2019 tenant. And you can see that I have a couple of clusters that are already configured with uh, some parameters or some information that's available for each of the clusters. All right, so we have one controller and three worker nodes in each of those clusters. Uh, as a developer user, I can manage these clusters either through an API or the user interface, which enables me to work more, more rapidly with Kubernetes and accomplish some pretty cool things like integrating Kubernetes cluster provisioning as part of a larger DevOps workflow. Uh, if I were to create a new cluster, we can take a look at some of the options that are available. So today in Mirantis CAS, we provide support for bare metal, OpenStack, and AWS. Uh, so I'd select where, where I'd like to deploy. If it's OpenStack, I'd go ahead and select that. And optionally add Istio, Harbor, and or the Kubernetes dashboard to my cluster. I can then go and configure additional networking parameters related to my cluster, and then uh, some features for logging, monitoring, and, and alerting that Mirantis has branded as Stackwhite. That's based on Prometheus and its related cloud-native functionality. So I'd go ahead and enable that typically, and uh, go ahead 
and deploy my cluster after configuring all of those settings. Once the cluster is created, then I can add machines. Machines are, in this case, since I'm using OpenStack as my provider, uh, based on virtual machines. And I can easily add additional control or worker nodes to my cluster as needed by configuring a few, you know, the minimal number of parameters related to the machines. Uh, if I needed to interact with my cluster using standard Kubernetes APIs, I simply need to download the kubeconfig for that cluster and uh, I can start using a command line interface to interact with it from that point on. Everything Mirantis provides is upstream open source, uh, so it gives the maximum amount of uh, flexibility for enterprises for deploying across clouds, as well as for developers in terms of app portability. So we're really excited about it. We've had a, a you know, tremendous interest here at the show, and we'd invite you to take a look at it yourself. It's available for free download and usage at morantis.com slash CAS. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. Cheers.